Hi, and welcome to this. Hi, and welcome to this vlog. Today, I'm going to show you how I make the horse ointment that I make myself and how I apply it. Because I use it in the main tail and on the legs, I need absolutely liters of it each year and it is so inexpensive to make. So I have quite many containers that I fill regularly uh, with it. You can also use it on the hooves. Yesterday I used it on his hooves and you can see they are very nice and moisturized still. <laughs> Okay, so I started making this balm because I kind of gave up on the regular balms that you can get for horses. Not because they didn't work, but because they were ridiculously expensive. Like I could get a, a small bottle of a summer ointment that I felt worked the best on my horses. And it would be like $60 for this little dispenser. So it was just ridiculous. Um, so I started making it myself because I got to mult. Tractor never had a problem with his skin on his legs, but to mult has. And it's kind of a hyperkeratosis kind of thing where the skin makes excess cells on the top layer of the skin. So you get a cakey skin substance that flakes off like very heavy dandruff. And this kind of irritates the skin if it gets to sit. So you use a balm on it to make these flakes as soft as possible. Uh, so they just glide off down the hairs. Uh, and I felt that worked the best. I've tried a lot of balms and salves and ointments out there. And I felt the ones that worked the best for us were the ones that had uh, beeswax and oil in them. Any kind of lotion just caked it up even more. So when beeswax comes in contact with the skin, it heats up and it will melt. So that is where you get the, uh, and, and also from the oil in the, in the balm, with, together with the beeswax, it will create a moisturizing effect and at the same time become a water repellent because water dries out skin really quickly. And also on top of that, if there is any kind of dirt and stuff that sits on the leg, it just, just comes right off. It just glides off because it gets so slippery there. It's also very easy for you to just clean it off with a towel or something when it's on there. Uh, the two big factors in making this bomb, or the, the expense of making this bomb yourself, is going to be what you can add to it. So it's going to be these guys. Uh, so these are the 
different kind of oils or special oils, uh, essential oils or yeah, any oil you want to add to it. I use neem. So this is a insect repellent. So if there is any mite or any kind of anything, any bug you don't want to have in the hair, you can use that. And then I use eucalyptus oil. And this is just uh, for the smell. I find that it repels a lot of the flying uh, mites, I guess they are too, um, that, that also sting uh, and, and bite the horse as well. And the same with tea tree oil. And this is also just for the skin as well uh, to make it heal better and, uh, and so on. So I use this for uh, the main and tail and the legs primarily and I find this combo to be perfect for that because the stinging flies um, and, and bugs and the hyperkeratosis this take care of it very efficiently. Your other big investment in making this balm is gonna be time so or the oil itself <laughs> you, you, you put your, your time in. So in here is the marigold and it has been sitting for, I think this one has been sitting for eight months, but you would like it for it to at least be sitting three months. And this is all dried uh, flowers that I grow myself. You can very easily get your hand on marigold. Otherwise you can just plant them yourself and they're very easy to plant and maintain. Uh, you just clip off the uh, the flower buds when they are in full bloom and then you just dry them anywhere in your house or outside and then you put them in olive oil and they need to stand like this for as I said at least three months and then your oil is ready to become a balm. So that is the two main factors. I bought a bulk beeswax so this is or this was 2.4 kilos and I got this for 80 bucks and it will probably last me years. Uh, you can see how little I used of it. Um, so depending on how thick uh, you want your balm to be, the more beeswax you would use. And on the other side, as runny as you would like your balm, the less beeswax you would use. Uh, so that is basically it. You need the pure oils for what you want to have the balm to smell like or the special kind of uh, effects that you would like it to have on the skin. And then you would need the beeswax and the oil infused with whatever plant you would like to have it infused with. I use marigold because it is very nice for the skin and it's very easy to get your hands on. But you can basically use any flower or any plant you would like. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up here if anyone thinks that this looks like a great business opportunity to get into and you are living in Sweden. When you are mixing beeswax and oil you are creating a pharmaceutical product uh, and this is a business regulated by the Swedish Medicine Council and selling your bombs without a license uh, it, it can actually cost you up to two years in jail. Uh, so you need to get a license and you need to pay a license fee per recipe that you have. Um, just a heads up if anyone wanted to get into that kind of business but if you're making it for yourself it's free you don't have to care about any license. So this is all you're gonna need. Uh, you're gonna start with beeswax as you can tell I have a lot of it uh, and then you're gonna need a container for your balm and I just use basically anything that my hand can fit in so I can get to the bottom of it uh, and this is just a leftover kitchen um, supply. Then you're going to need something to stir with and I usually use this uh, baking tool. It's good because you're going to need to scrape the sides down when you are cooking the balm. And of course you're going to need calendula oil. Now this is a calendula or marigold as you can see down here in olive oil. And I use as high grade olive oil as I can get my hands on uh, for a good price. So any 
olive oil is great. Uh, I wouldn't recommend making it with any other oil, not coconut, not rapeseed, just olive oil is great for it. Then you're going to need a double boiler and if you don't have one it's fine, it will be just as easy as if you have a double boiler. So if you don't have one of these, you just use a normal pot with a water bath in it um, that you just boil and then you have a, a bowl on top of that and it is just as easy, it's almost, almost no difference. Then you're going to need whatever you would like for uh, putting in the uh, calendula oil or in your balm. So this is if you would like your balm to have any uh, other effect than being uh, protective from water and moisturizing. I use this neem oil just in case that he has any kind of mites or anything living in his uh, fur, this will clear it out. And it's a nice and natural way. It, it stinks a lot, but uh, I use the tea tree oil and the eucalyptus oil uh, to prevent the stench from taking over. Uh, also, of course, the tea tree oil has um, a nice effect on skin, so it's also for that. But you can use any oil you would like, any perfume and stuff you would like to have in it, of course you can use, just be sure that your horse isn't allergic to it or if uh, has a bad effect of it. So if you didn't have a double boiler, you would just fill, out, fill up a pot, a normal pot with water and then just place your bowl on top. That, that is going to keep the, the oil there. And you would like it to be on the lowest power setting. So the lowest possible power setting for the beeswax to melt into the oil. I have my double boiler warming up here. And I'm going to strain the marigolds out from the oil. So the oil has heated up now. Uh, my induction plate here goes to nine. And as you can see, I am on two right now. So as soon as it's heating up and the little beeswax uh, nodules <laughs> or pieces that you can see that they are uh, melting, then you just uh, put it way down because then the oil is hot enough for it to melt. So I like my uh, balm very firm. So I am gonna put double the amount of beeswax in. And this is just because you, you're gonna have it out in summer and you don't want it to, um, uh, well, melt on you too easily. To check if my balm is firm enough, I will keep a lid from the container that I'm going to keep it in, in the fridge for a little while, and then we're going to drop test it. So the beeswax has almost uh, melted away, so we're going to check if it has become firm enough. So I just take a little droplet and put it on my lid here that is cold. And as you can see, it's it's firm, and I think it's it's firm enough. You can kind of because it's still a little bit warm now, but you can kind of imagine how it's going to be when it's done because the lid itself is very cold. 
So we're gonna put the oils in and then we're gonna um, put it in the jar. So this is the neem oil that is all brown and very, very strongly smelling. And the other oils are mixed in with it. And you can immediately see the neem oil reacting to the uh, the balm here. You can you can hardly see through it anymore. So it has diffused and it's smelling lovely. So we're gonna put it in the glass. So because we had the, the double boiler on a very, very low setting, just enough to melt the beeswax, the oil itself is not at all hot, so you can just take the glass and put it anywhere to cool off. Uh, I like to keep the lid off when it cools off, just because it will gather a little bit of water on, uh, on, the, on the lid part. So it's just going to stand here and smell amazing and just cool off. And you can tell we had a lot left, so I'm going to find another container to put it in. Uh, I would say many containers instead of one big one, because they do get kind of messy, uh, at least for me. It's hard to keep uh, like horse hair and stuff from it, so I think this about uh, is the it's a good size for a container for it. So it is about two weeks now from applying uh, the salve from the f for the first time and the legs are quite a lot nicer. I'm not sure if you can tell, <laughs> uh, but they are softer and there is a lot less of the little uh, uh, dandruff-like scabs. So I'm gonna uh, give him another round now. The most important part is that it dries out on its own between the tr uh, treatments. Uh, I find that the skin accepts it a lot better and it doesn't get irritated at all.
It is raining today, so I seek refuge in our greenhouse. This is how our bomb turned out. It got quite a green color. I used an uh, extra amount of, uh, of the neem oil, so I think that is, that is why. And you can see it turned out quite firm. And I think it's gonna work just great. Now, I haven't had any one of these bombs turn out in a bad way. They all moisturize, they all keep water away, um, and they, they all smell very lovely. So this is a very uh, cheap way for me to create the bombs that I feel that my horses need, because I feel like the ones I can buy in the store are just, uh, to a ridiculous price and this is a lot cheaper to make yourself and as you can see you can make liters of it I made this much out of a full um, oil container like this one and you can really just you can make as much as you would like depending on how much oil and how much beeswax you have ready uh, the essential oils is just optional you don't need to have them on its own, beeswax and oil is a great moisturizer and you can still use it on your horse. So you can just continue to do whatever essential oil that you feel necessary. When I first started this, I was washing him a lot on his leg because I thought it was a, a common thing uh, like uh, rot or rain rot on the feet, but it was just hyperkeratosis. So with me washing and washing all the time, it just got worse and worse. So I really was just, uh, it, the necessary thing was just to moisturize more so the little scabs themselves can just glide off the skin. Uh, so I hope this gave you a little information about how I create and make my own balm uh, and how you as well can use it on your own horse. I wish you could smell it. Does it make sense that it smells green? It smells yellow-green. It smells exactly how it looks.